welcome to Women Engage. We are so glad that you could be with us today where real women talk about real issues. I have a panel of beautiful women um, that come to us from across our wonderful continent that have come to talk to you today about the important topic of women and their extended family. So um, I want to encourage you, those of you who are watching from home, if you want to get engaged with our topic, whether it's this topic or any other topic that you hear in our series, to please log on to our website, which is www.ecdadventist.org and click on Women Engage. We would love to hear from you. So at this time, I want to introduce you to the lovely ladies that I have with us today. I'll start by introducing myself to you. And I'm going to tell you um, what family I was born into, the size of the family. So I'll ask the other ladies to, to tell us the same. My name is Jocelyn Isabidye. I come from a nuclear family. I was born into a nuclear family of eight. Um, I have five brothers and I'm an only girl. So I'll ask the rest of the ladies to just introduce themselves and tell us about the size of the family that you were born into. I'm Margaret Mutero. I was born in a family of eight. Uh, four boys and two girls. I'm Debbie Maloba. I was born in a family of six uh, children, three boys and three uh, girls, but uh, God has allowed that one uh, rested. My name is Nora Mauti. I was born in a family of eight, four girls, four boys, but uh, we lost a sister this year, so we are three girls, four boys, including my parents, that's a family of ten. My name is Yetunde Odeyemi. I come from a very large family. It's a polygamous home. And um, we are 10 kids, 10 children, six girls and four boys. My name is Miriam. I come from a very tiny family in the sense that we are only two girls. My parents had only two children and we are only two girls. So a very small family. Okay, welcome ladies. So today we are talking about our families. And I've asked you to um, <coughs> tell us you know, about your nuclear family, the families that you were born into. This is a panel of all of, these, uh, of us here are married, which means our family has extended beyond what we've spoken about. But we can already see, if you come from a family like Yatunde of 10 children, now if you're adding to another home, we don't know if that home has two or four, or our families do become fairly large. Yeah. And then our siblings marry, and so you can imagine the size of our families. Now, maybe let's first just put this into perspective. Is it important for us to talk about our extended families? Why is this an issue, a real issue for us to discuss as women today? Extended families can be, uh, can be a very uh, unique uh, connection. Mm. So we need to talk about it. Uh, sometimes it comes with blessings. Sometimes it comes with problems. Mm. Yeah, because you get to meet people that you don't know. For example, my brothers got married. You don't know these ladies. Mm. So you have to know how to connect with them. Mm. Yeah, for you to live amicably. So it's, it's a very important topic to talk about. Uh, when uh, you consider the extended family in which you belong, even people around you will value you. Uh, they will uh, also give respect to you because they know that you belong to uh, that family. And also, it gives you power. Mm. Yes. Can you explain a little bit about that? What do you mean? How does it give you power? It gives you power because uh, whatever you have, uh, let's say, uh, challenges you are facing, they are there to help you and also to come uh, be beside you mm. so that you don't feel alone. Mm. Even others will fear mm. because they will say, oh, Debbie comes from a strong family. Don't play with her. <laughs> <laughs> be careful. Okay. Yes. So there's that element of protection. Yes, protection. That comes from your extended family. Yes. Okay. Mm. I, I think the, ex, the, the large family or the extended family is your, is your safety net, mm. is your number one safety net. Um, like Debbie has just said, I used to remember in my growing days, when people come to our doorstep and they press the doorbell, 
imagine there are 10 children at home. Mm. That is outside of other relations who were living with us. Mm. And so children used to be scared of coming there. They said, that house, there are too many people there. But you know, I found it to be a strong point as I grew up because um, we learned to live together. Mm. There was no reason to fight one another. My dad says, what will be the reason for fighting? Mm. This is your home. Mm. You're not going to get another one. So you better learn to love the people here. Mm. And because I had stepmothers, my dad would say, you can't claim to love the child of this woman and not love the woman. Mm. So you had to widen your ability mm. to love people. Mm. You know, and when we have functions today, my siblings are married. I don't even have to distribute invitation cards. Mm. Imagine nine siblings with their spouses, with their children, mm. and in the African context, those people would also bring, their spouse would also bring people from their own side. Mm. So it, it gives a sort of joy to have a large family, especially if there's no need for fighting. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I think it also <coughs> helps with resources. Okay. Because for example, in my case, since we come from a very small, tiny family, my mother go to her cousins, go to the aunties, and then she will explain the problem. So any financial resources or otherwise, you can pull. Mm -hmm. You know where to go and it is, somehow it, it's more comfortable to go to family first mm -hmm. before going to outside of the circle of family. It's, it's really a support network, like many of you have said, even emotional mm -hmm. uh, support, because uh, there are many things you can tell a stranger, mm -hmm. but within your extended family, even if you may not tell everybody, there's somebody you may trust and go and tell them what is bothering you, and most of the time, they will be there for you, they will encourage you, they will support you. Even sometimes financially, when you have financial difficulties, they are there for you. Even the fight, you <laughs> learn from them. Yeah. Because you, you see, um, this, is, this is what teaches you how to relate with the people outside there. You mm -hmm. relate with, with people in a safe way, mm -hmm. in your family, extended family. And when you go out there in the places of work, in church, you also learn how to deal with difficult people, just like you have learned to deal with difficult people in your family. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's, it's a good way that God brought families together to teach us how to relate with the, with the bigger society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting listening to um, all of you ladies. <clears throat> You're very positive um, in, your, in, in your view of the extended family. And um, I just remembered something that my mother-in-law said to me Soon after, um, I had not been married for, for long, about 17 years ago. I've now been married for 18 years. But I remember she said something to me, and I had never thought of that. Um, she said to me, um, I can't remember what we were talking about, but we came to start talking about, you know, the fact that, you know, she's my mother-in-law, and I'm very blessed with the mother-in-law that, that God gave me. She's mm -hmm. very loving, very wonderful. And um, as we were talking about that kind of relationship, and she was also expressing, you know, appreciation. And, and, um, and then she said to me something. She quoted a saying from um, the mother tongue that I had not heard of. <clears throat> and she said, you know, if you marry into a family and, you have, and your mother-in-law is dead, you thank God. And I remember when she said it, I was so shocked because I'd never heard anything like that. <clears throat> because my mother had not brought me up to think in that way. Mm -hmm. And thinking about our extended families, I noticed there's a lot of positivity. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, that's something that we need to bring even into our children as they're growing up, for them to actually see the extended family as a blessing. Because I'm, I'm hearing all of your stories and having all these people come into your home. You know, I was, you know, the same. We had relatives in our home all the time. And on top of that, I'm a pastor's kid. So the house belongs to the church. And so, you know, you can be woken up at night. I'm lucky because no one ever took my bed. I'm an only girl. <laughs> <laughs> but my brothers <laughs> would be, you know, taken out of their beds and, um, and, 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 you know, made to sleep on the floor because there are visitors that have come. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and I think that the first thing that we need to do is think about everything positively. Mm -hmm. And then we can be able to deal with any challenges that come yes. because we're already positive mm -hmm. and we're seeing it as a blessing. Yes. So it's, it's great that, um, that we can actually see that our extended family is, is a gift yes. that God has given us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've, we've talked about the strengths. 
but also slightly has been mentioned that it comes with challenges that can help us to grow emotionally mm. and so on. So what are some of the challenges then that come from um, having this extended family that we have to deal with? I think the first challenge, especially in the African context, is the one I know better, mm. is the expectations. Mm. Sometimes extended family expect too much from, uh, from an individual in the family, especially mm. if they perceive that you have been blessed. Okay. You are financially better than they are. Mm. So they will, they will come to you with all their needs, mm. and they will expect you to, to meet all those needs. Even sometimes when you're not able to meet the needs. Mm. This one came yesterday. This one comes today, the other one comes tomorrow. You, as an individual, you may not have the means to meet all these needs. Mm. And, 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 and they are not happy about that. So mm. the expectations sometimes are too high. Mm. Mm -hmm. Being the firstborn, it's not easy. Uh, almost everybody is looking at you, mm. uh, raising children, helping them to go to school, giving them clothes, food. So you find yourself. If in uh, that extended family you do not have people who are well seated, mm. it gives you challenges mm. because you have to uh, give them what they need. Mm. And if you do not have, it's a challenge. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, one other challenge uh, also is uh, about the responsibilities that come, for example, with marriage. Mm. Yeah, when, uh, for example, okay, my son gets married. Eh? And then uh, if he was taking care of me, was giving me money, he was there for me. Yes. But when he marries, that now, you know, has to shed off. Mm. He, he tends to, to be more with the wife. And then I will start complaining. Now mm. my son doesn't give me money. Mm. My son doesn't, is not close to me anymore. Mm. So I start seeing this lady as, uh, you know, interference, you know. Mm. She came in and interfered with the the relationship with my son mm. and that creates problems yes, yes. Mm. i think for most women the extended family it's is not just your own immediate extended family where you are born like nora said when you get married you get to adopt that family and they will adopt you as well but is is a whole learning ground for the rest of your life mm. because you will not necessarily fully understand all of them. Not even during, even if you date your husband for I don't know how many years, it takes time to know people. Yeah, and most of the time, women feel like they've been thrown into a family that is not very receptive of them. You know, families have their norms, their values, they have the way they do things. For instance, a, a lady got married into a family and um, for quite some time they didn't go home. And then they went home on vacation and the mother was excited to see her son. And so she wanted to cook for her son, do things for her son, as if he didn't have a wife. Mm. And the mother was just oblivious of the presence of that wife. Mm. She even took the man's clothes and she washed them and... The lady, while narrating this, she said she looked and she thought to herself, should I fight this woman? <laughs> Does this mama realize that I'm the wife now? Mm. Then she said, no, let me sit back and enjoy it. Mm. It's just a vacation period. It's not going to be forever. She, we are not going to be here with her for the rest of our lives. We'll go back to our normal life. Mm. Yes, the, woman, the, the wife felt that she's been put out of the picture. Mm. And even the way she put it was that if it was possible to put a bib on the man's <laughs> shirt, mom was ready to do that. This is her dear son. Yeah. So when they left, the fall, subsequent times they went on vacation, the, uh, the mother-in-law tried to sit back mm. and let her do the things she would do for her husband. Mm. And she said, you know, I miss those days. <laughs> I miss those days when mom was doing everything. Mm. I just could come on vacation and relax. Mm. But it's not every woman who is able to take it yes. that way. Mm. At times, you, you feel like you've been pushed away from the picture mm. and these in-laws are not allowing you mm. to do the things you need to do or they are not giving you the recognition mm. that you think you deserve as mm. a wife. Mm. On that day, they would have said you are a daughter. Yeah, but you don't get to be treated like a daughter for some reason. So mm. I think um, women struggle through that aspect of the 
family they get adopted into or which they themselves adopt through marriage. Mm. And um, it takes a while mm. to fully understand and uh, to get integrated okay. with that extended family. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so there are challenges. Um, we're going to take a um, short commercial break, but when we come back, we're going to talk about how to deal with these challenges. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Women Engage, where real women talk about real issues. So we're talking about the woman and her extended family. And we're talking about some of the challenges that come from being part of an extended family. I just want to share um, with you from 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 8. It says, Anyone who does not provide for their relatives, and especially for their own household, has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. That's strong. <laughs> That's very, very strong. Mm -hmm. And um, as we were sharing earlier about um, the challenges, we talked about um, resources, but we also talked about emotional um, uh, resources. And so I think this provision is not just in terms of material provision, mm -hmm. but you know, it's very holistic. Mm -hmm. So we said that there are challenges that come with belonging to an extended family. Uh, how do we deal with those challenges? I think that the first, um, personally, what I think that we should do is to set boundaries. Mm. As much as we have heard from the Bible that we need to provide, and the expectation from the family members is that we should provide. But there should be, I mean, you know yourself how much you can be able to do and how much you are, you, you are not able to do. I remember one time my own brother, the one who follows me, told me, you are stretching yourself thin. Mm. Because I used to be a yes woman. Whatever I'm asked, I will provide, even when it meant that I'm really leaving my own self mm. with almost nothing. So I'll give and give and give and give. And then one, one, when my brother told me that, it dawned to me that I'm also as important as this other f part of family are, mm. that I should also, because my, that time my, my children were very little. Mm. But you see, even if they are little, they will grow and you need to save for their schooling and everything. So even as much as we need to provide and uh, an expectation is very high, we need to help these people understand that you don't have limitless funds you don't have limitless, I mean, even emotions. Even you yourself, you get exhausted. Mm. So sometimes you need another person to assist them. You tell them, this time I'm not able. And, and they know that you have helped them in the past, even though they may not take that kindly. But when you set those boundaries, with time they respect them. Mm. Mm -hmm. As you were sharing that, I was just thinking, <clears throat> there are two, two scriptures that sometimes I think about them, and I think this is a a bit of a contradiction. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, the scripture says, bear one another's burdens. Mm -hmm. But then God's word also says, every man should carry their own load. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, there seems to be like a contradiction <coughs> there. But I think that um, when we, a burden is something that I cannot bear on my own. Mm -hmm. But a load is something that's challenging. But maybe I, if I really tried, mm -hmm. I could maybe be able to bear it. And maybe setting boundaries also means being able to tell the difference between a burden mm -hmm. that someone cannot bear on their own and a load. And sometimes everyone wants to give you their loads mm -hmm. as well as their burdens to that's bear. True. So I, th I think that's a very important point. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yeah, I have an uh, example from my own family. When I got married, uh, after some years, we discovered that in my uh, husband's family, there were not many who were educated. And we said, now, uh, this is a challenge. How are we going to help everyone? That is ex and, uh, the extended family. Mm. Maybe what we can do is with uh, the little we have, just to plan and help even uh, that family that is beyond our own family, to support and sponsor some of those young people, young men. And God helped us. We did it. And today I'm very happy because we are not feeling that uh, burden because we have people who can also help us mm -hmm. and help others. Mm -hmm. This is only one of those ways you can also come up with ideas to help you 
to maybe limit uh, those uh, challenges. So you think about how you can help in a way that will help in the long term. Yes. yes. So teach in a man how term. to fish rather yes. than just right. giving him yes. the fish. Yes. That because then he will become self-sufficient mm -hmm. yes. and he'll be able to stand on his own and also be able to support others. Yes. So try and think of the long term rather than just short term yes. benefits. Yes. And yes. adding to advice. that, mm. I think we need in Africa, we need to stop this dependency. Mm. Sometimes we encourage dependency too much on our family members. Uh, some will even not look for a job because mm. my sister or my brother yeah. has means. Mm. Yes. So we need to stop the dependency and teach people to be independent and codependent. Mm. That you can help me this time and I can help you tomorrow. Mm. So instead of always feeling like we have to carry the burdens, we need to teach these people that they don't have to always depend on other people. Yeah. They, God has given every human being the ability to sweat and work and get their own things to, 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 to continue with their own life. Mm. Mm -hmm. I like the, the dimension um, Debbie spoke about. You know, maybe in your immediate extended family, you don't see it as a burden if you are doing something for somebody. But when it comes to an extended family where you got married into, it takes a while to integrate. It takes a while to feel like you are part of this family. And so the long-term planning, I think, is the best measure. Mm -hmm. And when I asked my dad, why do you bring everybody to come school to get a job? My dad says, if the community is educated, will be happier. Everybody can sit and enjoy themselves. Mm -hmm. And when my dad died, I remember my mom's first concern was, how do we get all children to go to school? I was the only one who had finished in the university, and my mom kept telling me, she said, you must work hard. You team up with me and with your other mothers, which the way we used to refer to them, every mother was mom. Mm -hmm. There was no distinction mm -hmm. to say, it's not my mom. She said, you team up with me and your moms and we have to send all your children to school. If we pull all these other nine children up, you will be able to have peace of mind in the mm. future. And so the, the aspect I do not like is when women think that if they are married into this family, everybody should keep off. Mm. To me, I don't know about others, I don't think it's a nice idea. Yes, it's true that you are married to this man, but that man did not drop from heaven. And um, I remember a discussion with a friend in the university. She said, I'm going to make sure I marry a man who does not have a mother. Mm. <laughs> Which is what my mother-in-law also told me. And so <laughs> yes. I, I, I looked at her, you mm. know, I was, she's been saying it repeatedly. Mm. Initially, I used to laugh. But one day it crossed my mind and I spoke what the idea that crossed my mind. I said, do you wish for your mom to die? before your brothers would be married, yes. you know? So it, it, it behoves the woman to think of it that, okay, I'm going into this family. They don't even know me. Mm. So I don't know them either. Yeah. Can we give each other a chance mm. and get to know each other? Yeah. yeah. Instead of chasing them away and say, they don't have to come and use our resources. Mm -hmm. My husband is married to me and I'm married mm. to him. Yeah. 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 I think that's important, that element of the fact that we come with an idea of positiveness, like you were yes. mentioning. And I think part of, the, part of the thing that can really help is to create event and memory within the extended family. See, like for example, I, I, I said I, I come from a very small family. My husband on the other side has 10 siblings. Wow. So you can imagine my in-laws is <laughs> in a, a clan, so to yes. speak. But uh, my mother-in-law very early, she sort of, uh, you know, sort of, uh, sort of saying very implicitly that, you know, we will have that event. At the beginning, I did not understand what it was all about. Mm. She said, you know, we will have get together and then we will do something special. Just, just us. She calls us the clan. Just mm. us, the clan. All my sons and my daughters together. And I found out that over the years, because one problem with, in -law, with uh, you know, extended families and especially in-laws is that we have good feelings, but when it hurts, it hurts bad because mm. they are so close to us. Mm. And so it's hard to forgive. It's hard to, you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's very difficult because it's a relationship that we have big expectations. Yes. But at the same time, the expectation, will, it falls hard when we, you know, it, it doesn't get matched mm. and, and met. So creating 
memories intentionally as women mm -hmm. coming together, you know, to, to create a memory with the whole family, with the children out there, you know, the elderly, that they can feel like we are part of one group and yes. we can pull together. Mm -hmm. I, I think it, 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 it does help. Yeah. I like what um, Marianne was saying, that word intentional. Um, I've advised one of my sisters, um, and I told her, look, if you, you know, going into a home, she had these apprehensions, all oh, those people, they're not going to like me, that kind of a thing. I told her, I said, if you ask the majority of married people, they will tell you there were people who had apprehensions about them joining their family. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there are people, yes, who are just malicious. They're just evil. Mm -hmm. They just don't like people. But other times... There are people who, they don't have anything against you personally, but maybe they have reasons why they are concerned. Maybe you come from a very wealthy family and they are intimidated by your wealth. They don't know how you will adjust to a poorer family. Mm -hmm. Maybe you come from um, you know, a completely different lifestyle. They're worried about how you're going to fit into their family lifestyle. Maybe the way that, you know, there might be some genuine concerns that they have that make it difficult for them to see how you're going to fit in. So I advised this sister and I said, your job is to prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. Don't be angry because, oh, you know, they don't like me because they think I'm going to be X, Y, and Z. They have reason to think that. And it might, some of them might be baseless, but sometimes it's because of some, you know, genuine concerns. They might be wrong. Your job is to prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. Prove them that in spite of the fact that you're different, in spite of the fact that maybe you didn't come in the family in the conventional way, or in spite of the fact that, whatever reason that you think they don't accept you, mm -hmm. prove to them that they are wrong. But if you come in with this, um, well, they don't like me, so I'm not going to like them, and I'm just going to keep off, you will never repair that. But if you're intentional and positive mm -hmm. and say, I will show them, that what they think of me is wrong. Mm. The people that sometimes are apprehensive about you at first may become your biggest champions and yeah. the people mm. that love you the most That's once true. you prove yourself mm. and, and you show that you're willing to work with yes, them. Yes, I agree with Debbie. Mm. And uh, the issue that is coming out very clear is the issue of attitude. Mm. With what attitude? What is your attitude towards your extended family members? Mm. How do you treat them yourself? Mm. Because uh, family life is like a bank. Mm. You deposit, you withdraw. Mm. If you don't deposit anything, you, you, withdraw. you know, mm. what are you going to mm. withdraw? Mm. So we have to be very careful how we treat our family members, extended family members, uh, because uh, they may hit back mm. if you mistreat them or if you treat them with uh, some arrogance, some bad mm. attitude. Uh, so although sometimes uh, you can be so kind until they are like, uh, this woman is too kind. What is the ulterior motive behind this kindness? Mm. So that, that becomes a challenge because how do you deal with that? You keep being kind. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, that is what yes. uh, Mother Teresa says. Mm. Uh, she says that uh, you can be so kind until people ask, why is she so kind? Mm. What she says is, be kind anyway. Yes. That is called an anyway poem. Mm. It, is, it's very, it has actually kept me going as a person. Mm. And she also says that... Uh, People are unreasonable, they are illogical, people are uh, self-centered, mm. but forgive them anyway. Yes. So that anyway, love yes. them anyway. Mm. Yes. So we should learn uh, how to deal with these issues. Mm. Yeah, especially from the biblical point of view, mm. pray about it, yes. accept the people, they will accept you as well. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, ladies. We could talk about this all day, but we have run out of time, unfortunately. So we are just um, excited that you could join us as we spoke about our extended families today. We've learned that attitude means a lot. We can be positive about our families. We can pray that God will help us to deal with the challenges. And, and as we share with other sisters going through the same, or um, we can be able to deal with anything that comes our way. And so peace be unto you in your families. Join us next time. Um, on Women Engage, where real women talk about real issues.